All right, today we're gonna be talking about stock splits, both reverse and forward. I'm gonna break down a little bit, you know, what are they, why do they happen, but then also I'm gonna wrap up with some trading strategy, ultimately to help put the rubber to the road, as they say. All right, that being said, I am lead trainer with Stocks to Trade, Tim Bowen. If you're looking for interesting and, and compelling and actionable trade ideas, definitely check out the Stocks to Trade Advisor. You can hit that link below. I'm live every single morning, 8.30 Eastern. Many of you might remember on the YouTube channel, I went over two years live every day. I'm still doing it. It's just now it's on the Stocks to Trade University site. Hit that link below for the Stocks to Trade University. All right, that being said, let's get to work. So what are stock splits? And why do we care? So I'm gonna start out with reverse splits because I know a lot of penny stockers out there like to look at these and listen, for several years, it was a great trading strategy. So bear with me. Um, roughly about two years ago, um, we saw so many of these beat down penny stocks that would do reverse splits to get their stock price up to maintain NASDAQ compliance. Now, ultimately, fundamentally, you know, nothing changes when a stock does a reverse split. So, and so let me, hear me out. So why do they, why does a 10 cent stock do a 200 for one reverse split? What that allows them to do is get the stock from 10 cents to two bucks so that they then they can maintain NASDAQ price requirements and stay on the NASDAQ and not get kicked down to the OTCs, okay? Listen, OTCs are great trading stocks, but everyone knows, hopefully you know, if you're new, you might not know this, okay? Everyone knows that all OTCs are scams, every single one of them, There's there's been like two uh, you know, OTC pink sheet stocks that have ever like actually succeeded in the world out of, you know, tens of thousands, okay? So people just day trade them. Now, when you're a NASDAQ stock, doesn't mean you're any higher quality or not. I mean, there's plenty of trash companies on the NASDAQ, but a lot of these companies are trying to raise money to actually try and do business. They mean well, okay? No OTC stock means well, okay? They just want to sell you paper, okay? That's all they want to do. Sooner you get, and, and remember, that doesn't, that's not a bash against OTCs. They're amazing trading opportunities if you know what you're, tr what you're doing and what you're trading. They're just selling paper, selling you shares so they can go buy cocaine and Lambos, okay? That's all they do. NASDAQ stocks, a lot of these companies are actually trying, okay? They'll, most of them will fail, but they're at least trying and how do you especially like in a biotech stock you know very capital intensive industry you got to spend millions and millions and millions in r d fda studies you know it's just it's a very front-ended business and, and actually we have a biotech video where i talk several biotech videos where i talk about this but you know it's just ultimately you got to spend a lot of money up front to then potentially have a blockbuster drug and then you make billions. But you know, you gotta sell stock to do that. So um, if you can stay on the NASDAQ and get people believing, you're gonna get the press releases out, you can keep funding that R and D and or or your R and D on a real product and you can stay in business. So they don't wanna get kicked out of the OTCs because because they know what people think of them. So what they do, what you gotta remember is nothing changes. All they're doing is re reducing the amount of shares outstanding to increase the price. So think about it, if it's a million market cap, okay, e easy numbers for me to do the math in my head. I don't have any notes, okay? So let's say the market cap of the stock is 1 million and it's trading at a dollar. Again, we'll make it easy on me, okay? So it's $1 share, million shares outstanding, market cap equals a million dollars. The entire company's worth a million. So they want to trade at 10 bucks a share. All they're doing is a legal filing to reduce the number of out, outstanding shares to increase the price. So if they do a 10 for one reverse split, all that does is reduce the amount of shares outstanding to 100,000, okay? And then now the stock's going to trade at 10 bucks. 10 times 100,000, 1 million market cap. Nothing changes in the business, nothing changes in the dynamics. But Again, we recognize a, a year ago, a lot of people were using this as a catalyst, as, as a simply as a reason to run these stocks. Now, that will come back. I think that will come back in a great way to know when trends shift. 
stocks to trade advisory, okay? So that's the mechanics of a reverse split. A couple years ago, it was one of the hottest trading strategies. I probably got videos from you know 2019. Basically, the reverse split idea kind of went away when we went into 2020 and meme stocks were the rage. You know, it's just, it was a hot sector. So now let's talk about forward splits in the mechanic, okay? So like Amazon is the next one up. You can see huge gap up last night that they announced a 20 for one reverse split. So that's gonna be, ha, this shows you how dumb I am. So trading at roughly 3,000 a share. Um, so 150 bucks. So after, depending on when they have the forward split scheduled, Amazon's gonna be trading at or around 150 bucks. Now, why do they do it? Why does Amazon want to reduce the price of their stock? Now understand, all they're doing is increasing the amount of shares at, and then that will drive the, the price down to 150. Market cap's still gonna be roughly 1.5 billion. They're just gonna expand the number of shares by 20 times, which drives down the trading price of the stock to that 150 bucks. Doesn't change anything fundamentally, doesn't change anything about the business, just one day it's trading at 3,000, next day it's trading at 150. Now, why do they do that? Listen. Maybe you're one of those people. Maybe you believe in Amazon. Listen, hey, it's funny. Like, I worry about like the UPS guy if I don't get a box from Amazon. I'm like, man, I hope he's okay. No UPS truck today. You know, so I mean, especially with the pandemic, I mean, amazing trading opportunity in Amazon and investment opportunity. Okay. But many of you are probably here because you got small accounts. I mean, what are you gonna do? You can buy one share of Amazon, two shares. And then hope it goes, you know, hope it doubles, you know, it's one of the biggest market cap stocks in the world. I mean, you, you trading two shares of this thing, one share of this thing, tying up your small account, you know, it's tough. You really can't. So they want to reduce the price because that way average Joes and Janes can buy a hundred shares, you know, can maybe buy, and listen, maybe you got a bigger account, maybe you can buy a thousand shares or something or, you know, but it makes it more accessible again, to the smaller traders, to the retail traders. Now, how do you trade them? Ultimately, you wait for the split to happen. Okay, I know a lot of people that buy in advance and you know, it's just, the problem is you're gonna wait around and you're just playing a guessing game. Now, what we look for is wait for the split to happen and then see how the stock reacts. Now, historically, you know, the last few years, I mean, Apple, huge runs after it did splits, Nvidia, uh, Tesla, I mean, Tesla, Tesla was already one of the best performing stocks in the entire market. They do a split and it went even crazier again. I mean, it was wild to see those moves on Tesla. And there's a good chance the same thing happens with Amazon because remember, a lot of these things become self-fulfilling prophecies, okay? And don't overcomplicate the market sometimes. Listen, if everybody, air quotes, thinks the stock's gonna go up after the split, and everybody, air quotes, just keeps buying and buying and buying. That creates demand. What pushes a stock price higher? You know, de more demand, more volume. So um, we've seen it repeat and repeat and repeat. Again, especially with these, uh, uh, the Apples, the Teslas, the NVIDIAs. And again, I predict the same on Amazon. So exciting times. I like to see it because a lot of people forget about Amazon from a day trading and, uh, standpoint. Again, you know, what are you gonna do? You know, you know I mean, listen, it's, if you had one share, you're up pretty well. You know, your stock's up 150 bucks today, but still it's a $3,000 position, 150 bucks. So it's just difficult to day trade these. And the nice thing is when the split happens, everyone's gonna be talking about it. Everyone's gonna be, you know, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. And there's a good chance it's gonna really create short-term day trading opportunities. And ultimately probably a good swing or uh, investing standpoint. So, all right, everyone, drop me a comment below. This is a little bit more of an educational video, but I get asked about splits a lot. What it, I mean, a lot of people don't even, uh, you know, especially reverse splits, very commonly misunderstood because people are like, hey, because here's the thing, when they do reverse splits, you'll see a stock up a thousand percent and you're like, hey, what's going on with this? And then you look at the news, you research it, and it's a reverse split. Stock isn't actually up a thousand percent. So that trips people up a lot. And then 
they run and they're like, whoa, what's going on here? But um, so hopefully you enjoyed the education. Um, hit, drop me a comment below. Let me know. And uh, we will see you next time.